Right now, we're going to Drew DeArmond, 97.7, the zone. Drew might be able to tell us. Drew, what do you think about Tua and his injury, this uh, little, Nick Saban called little setback? Well, I mean, uh, let's just put it this way. He's out for the rest of the spring. They, I think they fast-tracked it the first time because they wanted him to continue to get reps with the first group because he's the starting quarterback if he's healthy at the University of Alabama. He was doing some good things. You know, he was having, you know, a rapid recovery. But unfortunately, uh, from people that I speak with, I think he hit it on another defensive lineman's helmet again. I think, you know, there was, uh, you know, uh, uh, all I'll say is a re-injury. Of the, and which, uh, when you look at that cast, uh, the, you know, I've seen it as well, tweeted out by Bama Insider off of Tua Tonga Valoa's you know, Instagram account, obviously. Uh, I, it looks to me like he had further surgery uh, and that he'll be out, uh, you know, for a day. And and, that, and again, if, if, if I don't, you know, the way I look at it is Alabama needs to be thankful it didn't happen in the fall because uh, the bottom line is this. Uh, they, in order to reach the goals they want to reach, in order to beat the Georgia Bulldogs uh, in the SEC championship game, because I think they're the, they, the solid favorite in the East, in order to get back to the college football playoff for a fifth year in a row and have a chance to defend their title, they're going to need to a Tonga Vailoa under center. Uh, and uh, he, he's what makes this offense go. Uh, just from the people I've spoken with about the scrimmage in this, coming sa- this past Saturday inside, it was more the same. Uh, you know, it was more... You know, both quarterbacks had their moments, but it was more inconsistency, not a lot of rhythm to the passing game. Now, to be fair, uh, some of these weapons are not healthy. Uh, Jerry Judy's not out there. Now Terrell Shavers is not out there. Uh, so you've got some weapons, uh, without a doubt, that are going to be a, a, you know, a big part of things going forward. Uh, Josh Jacobs uh, was finally seen uh, during the media viewing period, but he has not gone through the spring. So there's a, you know, some – and Jalen Waddle is not going to be there until May. So big pieces of the puzzle aren't there. But, again, I just think if you're Alabama, the biggest thing is to get to a healthy. I, I still am not going to buy the fact that he's injury prone. He got through spring and fall last year without this happening. They're just freak situations. But I'll say what it has given them a chance is to see long-term Jalen Hurts and his improvement and then Mac Jones. And I'll go on record as saying I still think there's a bigger gap between Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts than there is between uh, you know Jalen Hurts and Mac Jones. Okay, so but but let's look at it from a standpoint of Jalen. I, I think we can you can look at this multiple different ways. Okay, for one, Jalen Hurts is given all, a lot of the attention because now there really wasn't this quarterback competition in the spring. So I think we can all go into Saturday going, this may be the biggest scrimmage of Jalen Hurts' career. Is that fair? Because if he goes out there and falls on his face, then then what do you do? I mean, because you're saying, okay, you've been given every opportunity here because there's been no Tua Tonga Valoa, at least full 100% go. Well, I I think that's fair because you want to see Jalen Hurts play well. I mean, remember, Ryan – Tua had a really good spring last year, had a very solid A-Day game, but Jalen was tremendous as well. Sure. Jerry Judy was, was MVP, but remember, uh, Tua probably, uh, you know, he had his moments and had some really good throws, but Jalen probably had his best, uh, you know, scrimmage of the spring in A-Day and threw the deep ball really well. Uh, and, you know, it gave a lot of people hope that he'd improve. Unfortunately, it didn't really carry over into uh, the season. Now, he did take care of the football and didn't turn it over, uh, but the, the down-the-field passing game, Ryan, Jalen Hurts hit more deep balls in A-Day last year than he hit all of last season. So, yes, I don't think there's any doubt it's a huge opportunity for Jalen to say, I'm here, I'm going to be competing in the fall, which he is. He's going to be competing with Tua Tonga Valoa. With what I just said with Mac Jones, I'm not saying Mac Jones is going to pass Jalen Hurts on the depth chart. All I said was, basically, in a nutshell, it's, it's plain to see that Tua Tagovailoa is, you know, the future at quarterback for Alabama. Because to me, there's just no juice without him back there uh, at QB. He, he provides the balance Alabama needs. He provides the ball distribution they need. And when everybody's healthy, Ryan, in the fall, there's going to be a lot of weapons on this team, and a lot of guys want to touch the football. And when you go back and you watch the national championship game, we've talked about it ad nauseum. Nine different receivers 
touch the football in the half. And that's the way you keep people happy is touching the football. And to me, the guy with the answers to the test is Tua Tonga Bailoa. So let me go back to Nick Saban because as you're talking here, I go back to what Nick Saban said because he said wide receivers need to go out there and make plays and quit looking back at the quarterback. Are we seeing some more frustration in these wide receivers? Well, I mean, look, all, all I can tell you is this, Ryan. We know for a fact that Tua didn't take a snap this past Saturday. Uh, Nick Saban went on record as saying that. Uh, we know he saw 15 to 20 snaps in the first scrimmage, and when he did, pop, 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 touchdown to Devonta Smith. We did not hear about that going on with the other two quarterbacks behind center. The bottom line is this. Uh, you know, I, these guys have been brought here that they want to touch the football. They want to make plays. Nick Saban's right. They have to catch the ball when given the opportunity. But I don't think there's any question that this football team has known since the middle of last season that the they had a quarterback with special talent that could get them the football. And I think there was frustration last year that he didn't play more. And I'm sure there's a little bit of frustration on these guys' part that they haven't been able to work with him and continue to get their chemistry down. But the one good thing for Alabama, in my opinion, is I expect Tua Tonga-Vailoa to be healthy by early June, be able to go through the entire summer and throw with these guys in seven-on-seven and continue to work, which is what he was doing this whole spring before spring practice started and he got injured. Uh, But I I still think Tua has got plenty of time to be the guy on this football team. But, of course, it's going to give you some anxiety and some uneasiness with him not being able to go through much of spring practice. But at the same time, if you're Alabama, you do have a heck of an insurance policy. You know you know a few things about Jalen Hurts. You know that he's the best running quarterback and rushing QB in Alabama history. You know he has a lot of toughness. Uh, and, he, and you know that he's been through the fire on the road and shown some leadership and won some big games. But the one thing you also know is that the passing game just – is not going to be what it needs to be without Tua Tonga Valoa uh, behind center. So the big focus, you know, the last week of practice uh, this week and then going forward should be getting Tua healthy and ready to compete with Jalen and really ready to uh, take the reins of this football team because I think the, the reason I was in a fast track uh, to uh, and it may have come back to bite them, is because they wanted him to be the first team guy. They wanted him to continue to build a repertoire, a repertoire with this football team and continue to build on what he did at the end of last season. Now, you know, you've you've hit a snag in the road a little bit. It's cost you some practices. It's cost you some time. But I think if you're Alabama, if this had to happen, it needed to happen in the spring, not in the fall, because now at least you get an extended look at your two other QBs to know what you truly have if you're Mike Loxley and Dan Enos. And remember, Enos just got here a few months ago. We're talking to Drew DeArmond, 97.7, the zone at Huntsville. Let's go with maybe the most disappointing this spring. And and sure, I guess we could stay with the injury injury bug, I guess, that's continued with Alabama. But let's talk about, I know Matt Womack is not there, but this offensive line has been very, very underachieving this spring. And I know Nick Saban tried to take up for him last week, but this offensive line, in a nutshell, has got whipped all spring. Well, I think they've got problems at right tackle right now and left guard. I think that's the you know their two biggest questions. I think they feel good about Ross Pierce Baker and how much he's played and his experience and and uh, and him being able to move over and take over the pivot. Um, I think they feel good about Jer- Jedrick Wills and his athleticism and his talent at right guard and his ability. Uh, I think they feel good about Jonah Williams. He was really good at right tackle as a true freshman, very solid as a sophomore at left tackle. Uh, They know what they have with him. They've got to figure out, as you said, Matt Womack missed the entire spring. Is he the right tackle? Based upon, you know, what we've been hearing, uh, you know, Alex Weatherwood has struggled some with pass protection. Still a very good young player. uh, But I think Matt Womack and his experience and his trust with the coaching staff, being one of their top three graded offensive linemen last year, I think – it's very likely that he would be plugged back into that right tackle spot. And then it's the big question at left guard. Do you go with the incumbent who had been the right guard before, Lester Cotton, who's moved over, but who has been prone to mental errors and prone to inconsistency in play? Or do you go with a guy like Josh Casher? He's a redshirt senior who Nick Saban has already lauded in a press conference earlier this spring for his leadership. And he's a guy that stuck around that could have transferred. 
He's, he, he doesn't, you know, uh, he doesn't have the ideal measurables that Nick Saban looks for, uh, but he's someone that's stuck around as a program guy and is talented. Or does a guy like Alex Weatherwood, Jedrick Wills has seen time at right tackle and right guard. It looks like he's settling in at right guard, Ryan. Do you move Alex Weatherwood inside the left guard? He's going to probably be more athletic than Josh Kasher and, uh, and Lester Cotton, and, it's a very, and I think he has a bigger upside, but he hasn't played a lot of guards. So they're going to have to make up their minds pretty early in fall camp next year about that. But I think uh, the right tackle and the left guard are the two biggest questions. With you know, I think the answer to right tackle is just injured, but it will be very interesting to see if it's a three-man uh, uh, gauntlet in battle at left guard coming in fall camp. Let's go to the guess the good news. and I, Or let, let's say what, I'll stay with the negative news, then we'll go to the good news coming up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, kicker, thank God for Austin Jones. Yeah, uh, you know, just from what, the, what I'm hearing, you know, uh, Belovis was very good the first scrimmage. You know, he was a struggle yesterday. Uh, or excuse me, Saturday, pardon me, indoors in the Malmore facility. Uh, you know, I, punting is hard. To, you know, it's always going to be hard to tell, uh, you know, if they, you know, you know from what I've, from people I've spoken with, uh, some high school coaches that attended the event, sounds like he struggled in the Friday open practice. Uh, but I still think it's early for Skylar DeLong. I mean, I, I've seen guys improve. I, certainly, He's not. He hasn't made the first impression that J.K. Scott did. But I would say that uh, there has to be some concern with the punting and the place kicking. Uh, Austin Jones from Temple will be there in May to join the fray. So far, uh, Joseph Belovis has been a little bit inconsistent, no question about it. Anxious to see how he bounces back for a day and how Skyward DeLong does as well. Uh, I would. I'd say right now that's a mild concern. Uh, but I do think Jeff Banks being able to work with these guys during the summer is going to help. I think it will help Skylar DeLon to continue to be in the strength program and continue to work on his technique. And, again, Nick Saban being the master that he is, uh, I think they've already kind of anticipated this inconsistency from Belovis, and that's why Austin Jones was brought in. He had a very good run at Temple until suffering an injury, and so uh, I think those two guys will compete throughout the spring uh, – sp- excuse me, the, the summer – and into the fall to see who the place kicker is for Alabama uh, in 2018. And I can tell you this, too. I think Nick Saban really would like to sign Will Reichert. He's the top-rated kicker punter in America from Hoover High School down the road for Josh Niblett because I think uh, that would be yet another uh, option they could go to next year and a guy that may be talented enough to handle all the jobs considering that Austin Jones will be a senior if he wins this kicking job and will not be with the team in 2019. So let's go to the positive news. It seems like with Craig Kudlegowski on that defensive line, you look at uh, the different different pieces that were lost and will be lost to the upcoming NFL draft, it seems like this defense is further ahead than maybe what we anticipated at this point. I think so. I think the one thing that you're hearing is Raquan Davis, he broke out last spring into the fall. He's doing it again. He's building on it. He's going to be a guy that's going to be one of those top 10 to 20 draft picks. He's going to be a dominant football player. you got Isaiah Bugs, who, uh, as we've seen with a pattern with Nick Saban, usually when you look at the back, I get back at a guy like Jaron Reed, they usually are better as seniors than they were as juniors. I think Bugs can be counted on. I think Quinn Williams is a redshirt sophomore. is really kind of taking the bull by the horns. And the beautiful thing about those three, Ryan, if those are your starters, if you play some four-man front, I mean, all three of them can play inside or out. Uh, I think Raekwon has the biggest upside because he's six foot seven. He can rush the passer. If he plays with a high motor, you heard Nick Saban mention that. I think he can be an unblockable guy. I think Bugs really started to come on the second half of last year and has really got a chance to be special. And then if Quinn and Williams can do that, and then you're building depth. I mean, I, I had good reports from guys like Johnny Dwight uh, in this last scrimmage. I think LeBron Ray is ready to be a player for Alabama. So I just really think right now the defensive line under uh, Craig Kuliakowski, I think it's going to be a unit that they might not have the depth of a couple years ago, uh, but I do think it'll be similar to this past year, and I think it'll be very good, especially if they can keep those first four or five healthy. And I just really think overall – it's a group that's going to be uh, a standout unit coached by a guy that is going to get the most effort out of them that's a proven teacher and developer of defensive linemen. Drew, on a little different note, 
Please tell me that I'm incorrect in reading this report that Nick Saban really considered Hugh Freeze. This was not just a PR stunt that Nick Saban really wanted to hire Hugh Freeze and the SEC blocked him. Oh, that's it's true. I mean, Nick Saban wanted to bring Hugh Freeze in to help with the offense. Uh, there's no doubt that LSU was interested in him. That I think Missouri wanted to hire him as offensive coordinator, and they were everybody in the SEC was blocked by Greg Sankey. He did not want Hugh Freeze, uh, you know, Kirby Smart's brother from another mother, to come back into the SEC yet. He wasn't ready for that. Uh, he he wanted he, you know he it was too soon. They'd had too much bad press from all the, you know, the shenanigans going on in the recruiting trail uh, for uh, from our Q Freeze. And so there was four or five schools that wanted to talk to you, Freeze, but I don't think Greg Sankey was ready to see him back, even in a, in a press box in the SEC. There it is. Drew DeArmon, I appreciate you for being a part of the show. I'll see you inside Bryant Diddy Stadium on Saturday, hanging out in the press box, you know, eating a couple of hot dogs, maybe knocking out a few uh, – Nice glasses of sweet tea and having some fun, but uh, maybe not as much excitement as what we originally anticipated. Mac Jones versus Jalen. Eh, it is what it is, but uh, either way, we'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. You know, Hopefully still hoping for a big crowd and some good weather. and You're sure going to see a lot of good young talent on defense. Watch out for Markel Benton, everybody. Uh, I think he, from what I'm hearing, he had a nice scrimmage in the second scrimmage, and then you know, there's a lot of good young guys in the secondary to watch because it's going to be a key for this team. Savion Smith's been an impact player. Uh, Xavier McKinney's certainly taken steps forward. And uh, I think it's going to be really good to see a lot of young players play, Kyrie McDonald. So the secondary is going to be a group to watch. And uh, I think uh, – and also just continue to see maybe uh, the growth of uh, this defense as a whole under a new staff and under – see the energy of Pete Golding and some of these uh, new coaches and Tosh Lee boys. So still some exciting uh, things to watch in, uh, for 8A 2018, but certainly with the likelihood of Tua Tagovailoa not there, uh, some of the excitement will be, uh, of course, missing, but still should be a great day for Alabama football uh, as they wrap it up before Nick Saban's 12th fall. Yeah, I think Alabama's going to bring on Dana White to see if he can promote it, uh, see if he can amp this thing up. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Drew DeArmond. I hope you have a great day, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. We always appreciate being on in Tuscaloosa. Thank you for having me.